Welcome to Power of the Tribe podcast. I'm John Connors. I'm the host of this podcast, and I'm the founder and head instructor of Connors Martial Arts. We're here in Norwood, Massachusetts. We teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai kickboxing, and mixed martial arts. If you're looking to make a big change in your life, a big positive change, if you want to perhaps lose weight, get in great shape, gain confidence, become the badass that you really are, then find a tribe that will help you. And Connors Martial Arts is certainly a tribe that can help you. And I'm here with my co-host, Dan Robin. How you doing, Dan? Good, John. How you doing? I think Dr. Dan Robin would be the good nickname for you. I know we haven't talked about your nickname for a while. but <laughs> I, I'm happy to get back on the subject. Doctor, I mean, you are a doctor. Yeah, you, you've earned the right to be called doctor, right? Yeah, is that a nickname, though? That's not a nickname. It's but a title. It's a title. But Dr. Dan would be the nickname. But I like it. It gives you some prestige, <laughs> credibility, right? Sure, I'll take it. Give our podcast some credibility. That's good. God knows we need that. Um, so Dan, you just got back from another trip. Yeah, I just got back from Paris, a week in Paris. It's an anniversary trip. Yeah, I'm you, all over the place. You week. are amazing. Yeah. An international <laughs> traveler, a bon vivant. Is that how you say it? Bon vivant? Yeah. You, you just got so back from Paris. <laughs> I believe that's how you say it, yeah. So was this a surprise trip? Not for me, since I planned it. And but for your wife, yes. Lucy. <laughs> that's really nice. Yeah, I surprised her with the trip to Paris. We went 25 years ago. Wow. But it was like, at the time, we stayed in a place where someone came in our hotel when we went there and stole money, stole our money. Oh. And, and, Holy uh, crap. That's we, a bummer. You know, we, we, had no, we had nothing back then, and we just kind of, I wanted to go back with, like, able to go to a nice mm. place and go see nice things. I think, as it turned out, it wasn't that different a trip, actually. <laughs> Did you get robbed again? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get robbed, but I felt like, boy, this is going to be so different. And then I sort of felt like it was kind of the same. Like, huh. if you go to, I think if you go to these European cities, it's kind of the same. You walk, you know, you walk cobblestone streets and yeah. you have a, like a boozy wine filled lunch. And, <laughs> you, know, and you, just, you know what? You I went to, to Barcelona park. and I basically did that for That's four days. Did, right? yeah. yeah, I know. I could have told you that because if you go to Europe, <laughs> that's what there is to do. You, you know, you walk down these quaint avenues and you're like, oh, this is nice. And you're like, oh, what is that building? Right. right. And that's Have a little coffee in the morning. Yeah. And a little wine at lunch. Go home for a nap. Yeah. Come out for a little dinner and drinks and then go yeah, home and, and go, fall you know, asleep. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of whether or not you get robbed. To, like, <laughs> is the, actually, 25 years ago, twice in one trip to France, someone tried to mug us. Hmm. And that, so that didn't happen. But that's the difference. I they think tried to mug you. Yes. So what happened? Did you use I, your martial arts experience to protect yourself? I did not have any, and I did not use any to protect myself. But, but they just, didn't succeed in no, mugging No, they you. did not succeed. I've, I have a pretty good record of attempted mugs <laughs> to non-mug. So record. what happened? Like, Give like me a blow by I'm blow. I'm like an 0 for 5. Well, this is the difference. I think when we were younger, we were out at you know, 1 30, 1 45, 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. And so that's when bad things happen. Everyone knows yeah. that. So two young guys came up. It was just me and my wife, who was not my wife yet at the time. And he was um, just yelling at us, saying, uh, he was saying, you know, we said, uh-oh, as soon as we saw them. You know, it was a dark, there's, there's dark alley. Dark, and dark alley, and there's two guys? Two in the morning, yeah. And they came up, and he said, you know, and tough, rough-looking guy, and he was like, I want, give me your wallet and passport, Wow, you know that's obnoxious. Yeah, your passport yeah. too. Yeah, but my thing was why would he want your passport? I don't know. Just to screw you over. I I don't know. Inconvenience you to the you. maximum. And it was you. one guy approaching you. No, no, two guys. Two guys. Yeah, so that's dangerous. One guy talking. Yeah. Even if you're skilled, two people. Yeah. It's that's but I wasn't e skilled at the time either. But I was just sort of. But I always like refuse. My thing about getting mugged too, and well, this isn't. I don't want to give bad advice anyway. But I sort of felt this is like, not advice. We'll give that yeah, a disclaimer. This is, yeah, exactly. This is, not a fish, but advice. Dan's but philosophy like, on mugging. I felt like you're gonna have to show me a weapon. You know, right, you know, it was like when right, you're like right. you're gonna have to like, it, it, and that's all you'd have to do. You're like I'm open to this whole mugging yeah. thing. I'm prepared. But I must be intimidated <laughs> to a certain I'm, level. Exactly. I'm prepared yeah. to give you my wallet, but you, like, and again, if show you just, me something. Say he just had a knife. Here it is. I go here. You go. Here's, yeah, exactly. And um, or even reached like he was going to. That right. Might, that might have been okay. Yep. 
but he was just like, give me your wallet and passport. And I was like, well, nah. no. <laughs> 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 then what did he and do? Well, what I started doing, I, I didn't say he was saying it in an accent. And I, I was, I had, you know, spent the trip saying, je ne parle pas français. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was sure. the one phrase I knew. Yeah. Other than un cru de détente. See you play, which is uh, to get a tuna sandwich. <laughs> Those are the two things I knew. So, do you ask say. him for a tuna sandwich? I I should have. You should have. That would have totally have. thrown him off. While. Yeah. <laughs> I think I asked him for. Give a tuna me your sandwich. money and your yeah. passport. Please give me a tuna yeah, sandwich. May I please have a tuna <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> so, but uh, but what I said was I don't speak I don't speak French. Right. But that kind of threw him off because he yeah. asked me in English. Right. So he's like. Huh. Your wallet and passport. And I'm like, uh, je ne parle. And You're he's like, <laughs> oué l'autobus. And, and at one point, <laughs> <laughs> he actually angrily at that point was like, I'm speaking English. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, je, uh, je ne sais je ne, pas. Like, so, no, <laughs> whatever he said, I would be like, je ne. Je ne Un petit uh, pas. Yeah. <laughs> and so then he started sort of kind of grabbing at me like kind of like and uh, like at my pocket he's getting you know? frustrated that he's not communicating yeah and i was sort of just like he's like my english is better than yeah, this how we dare he we had sort of a like a like a little a, french a, scuffle yeah, yeah a little scuffle like a little like him <laughs> reaching at me and me pushing his hands away and he was like well that passport dude i'm <laughs> speaking english you know <laughs> and i was like je ne, je ne. i kept saying it and then eventually he like he was just got frustrated and was like ah sacre like, bleu yeah, <laughs> stormed off angry and he just he was furious and just turned around and walked away and then we stupid went stupid Americans <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that was attempt one attempt two is that a was like a Jedi mind trick you played on I, I guess yeah. I was, and then um, two was much more boring it was um, I just spotted I'm just someone that always notice what's around me right all the time that's I'm, the I'm, best thing you can I'm do I'm sort of uh, but that for me, it's natural. It's not like I learned this trick and, you know, mm. I just always did. And I've always been – the opposite always bugs me. I've been with friends who, like – They're oblivious. Walk through Manhattan – Oblivious. Like, yeah. walk through Manhattan shrieking and, like, people, like, imitate them or look, give them angry looks. And I'm like, they, they, they have no idea this is happening. Mm. You know, they have no idea that peop- that they're irritating anyone or noticing mm. anything. I'm almost jealous. <laughs> but I've always noticed. So I was walking with my wife also late at night, and there were two guys following us. And so it, they were w- looking weird, you know. This was on your most <laughs> recent trip. Now, no, 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 that was that back th- then. Same back yeah. then. Yeah. And I um. And I just stopped, and then they st- they they did like a exaggerated like uh, like looking at <laughs> the, w- <in> the window, <laughs> you know, like suddenly they're staring at a window, and like and then I walked again and stuff, and they stopped. Did you again ask them for a like, tuna sandwich? And I'm like, hey, they're these guys following us, you know, and my wife's like, what? Well, uh, you know, and I just said, look, like, and I, that one, I just, we just ducked into a, so I don't even know that's a quite an attempted mugging, but we just ducked into a, st- a restaurant. You were being cased. Yeah, there was, so it was clearly weird. Yeah. And, um, but there was no doubt. I mean, so we just ducked into a restaurant until they left. But you're safe. I mean, that's yeah. what I tell students to come in. If you avoid last call, and if you're not out mm-hmm. at 2 a.m., if you do not get out of your car in a road rage situation, uh, you're going to dramatically reduce the chances of needing self-defense, right? Yeah. Well, the biggest thing about self-defense that people don't – you know, everyone wants flashy. They want, you know, the spinning kick to the – you know, they want the <laughs> heroic. Like a guy tried to mug me. I did a spinning kick. I knocked a knife out. Right. I did, did the uh, throat punch. But – the truth is, most of the time, if you get yourself out of a dangerous situation, you don't know. There's no reward because you don't even know for sure. That oh you right, did. right. Like if you like if it's like we don't know how much if you go to terrorism t- yeah. has been prevented right from homeland security because it doesn't happen, yeah. so you don't know about. Like it. if you go to turn down an alley and there's a, you get a bad feeling about some people mm. coming the other way, and you go, you know what? So I'll give an example. So I went out on the Cape, which is not a dangerous area. You know, the Cape Cape, Cape Cod, Cod of yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah, yep. I was with my son, Matt, who you know. Yeah. And we went out for a late dinner. It was weird. He was in a cross-country thing. Did I tell you this story? No. Maybe what town? Uh, near you Hyannis. Know. Okay. But, I mean, there's no dangerous towns in the Cape. Right. We went out for dinner, but we ended up out at like 11, 1130, something okay. that walked back to the hotel. So we'd walked to this restaurant through a park. And so 
walking it back, we were going to go through the same park. Mm. So as we get near the park, I just see a cup. Parks are always yeah. dangerous, aren't they? Yeah. It, it, it's well, like stereotypical, well, no right? Around. Like in um, Central Park used to have that notorious reputation, right? Yeah, well, it used to be thought of as you walk in and you're mugged. Yeah. But I when mean, I, I, it, when it, I was in Ecuador oh, in Quito, yeah. I don't know when, it was a couple of years ago, they have a little park there, and we were going to walk <laughs> through it, and we met this woman who spoke English very well, and she said, no, no, no. And this was like in noontime. She goes, you can't walk through the park. They jump out of the trees on you it's <laughs> like, like hide in the trees they jump out on top of you like spider monkeys and rob <laughs> you so we we walked all the way Dude, around I the even park believe that though. i believe <laughs> it it was a weird place you're getting yeah. near a tree right and you see someone up like pants, <laughs> a grown a man good an adult up to be like, the... you want to avoid that? <laughs> like to walk around i don't think it takes too much like oh you, yeah well i don't know how much foliage like, was in the tree if you see a guy tensed ready to jump in a tree Right. You gotta, I think it doesn't take that much sense to be like, let's like go around that tree. Like, let's not n- go near that tree. Because also, you have to have the exact right height. Like, how high can you jump from? Right. Uh, bu- I think 30 feet, feet and above is the death zone. <laughs> right. You could actually die. So it's probably so about 10 or 8 or 10 so feet high. So the guy's like right above your head <laughs> in a tree. Dan, I didn't take any chances. We just avoided the whole cir- so Actually, situation. when I was in Sao Paulo, so this is a perfect example of what I was saying. You don't know. Like we, I was walking again with my wife uh, in this one direction, and there was some uh, teenage kid, or you know, like twenty something kid, right. walking this way. And Toward you. Y- well, they, he was going to intersect. You're using us. your hand and fingers, and yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I was going this way. <laughs> oh, so you're going and this. They were going. He oh, was going so it's this a ninety way. degree intersectional yeah. thing. So he yeah. was going to meet up with us. Yes. And he was looking over at in, us. In football, we call that the angle of pursuit. They were going to meet up with yes. us. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. And he was looking at us, and I didn't think much of it. And then he saw – and he, like, put his hoodie up. Oh. And I was like exa- – that was – I think that might have been what I said. I, mean, yeah. I think internally I was like, huh. There's so, no cold wind blasting here, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, that's strange. So, like, I was just like, you know what? Like, with my wife, like, you know what? Let's just – no, and she was like, "What? Why?" And I was like, what it, "Did you stop or something?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, st- I said, "Let's go back the other way." Yeah, because he was still kind of a ways off. Like yes. he would have had to sprint down the path to catch yep. us. So I was like, "You know what?" But it's a perfect example of maybe that kid was go- not going to do anything. I got you. Got to figure. I think that was a good cue yeah, to pick but up you on. You figure seventy percent, seventy-five percent chance the kid's not going to do anything. But still, that's weird putting your hoodie up. Yeah, like right looking at us and then doing that. Yeah, but you never know. And uh, like, what was the temperature? Uh, I don't know. Was it? I didn't have. It wasn't cold. I didn't have. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Like he didn't need a hood. He didn't need a hood. Right. It wasn't raining. Right. So I. uh, But again, I don't know. I probably did nothing, but maybe I avoided it. No, I I think that was. And that's the other thing. Percentage move. So same thing with my. There's two guys in this park walking with my son in Cape Cod. Okay. And we're headed toward the. You know, we're, uh, you know, hundred yards away. Not no wait. That's pretty far. Fifty yards away from where these guys. There's two drunk guys in the park right they're kind of pushing each other they're like young they're shoving each right. other loud like they got that violent vibe to them yeah oh yeah and i just saw them and it was like it would have literally been us just the two of us walking past the two of them under us under a street light with no one else around yeah and so it was like i'm having trouble picturing that going smoothly. you should always avoid that yeah, so i just was, said to my son i said like let's just zoom so we around it but again there's no reward because you don't you're not like, yeah, I tried to get mugged and I knocked him out. I did the spinning kick. You're just like, I don't know if I t- maybe those two guys would have been like, how's it going? And you walk past. Probably. I mean, you got to who think knows? But I, I think that's always the good move. I think guys maybe struggle with that because they don't want to think that they're wimping out for something. Yeah. But it's almost always better to, quote unquote, wimp out than to avoid that type of potential conflict. Well, again, say it was even say I'm there with someone like a really one of these really good fighters we know what what's the upside we we beat the beat, shit out of a couple yeah, guys great. yeah <laughs> great but if you're there with uh, your wife or a date or somebody who's yeah. who's more vulnerable than you that's really dangerous yeah. you know the only thing i will say about both those situations i just named of the park in brazil and the park like that i saw it and um and, and france so all three of those things i saw it and the people went didn't see it so Other the, people the, did not see yeah, it. Yeah, like my son didn't right. see it. My wife didn't see it. Like there, so there's something to at least being 
someone like you that's it should huge. be you or yeah just like noticing these things you know you're spider-man your spidey sense i right, just always off. looking around right like not and again it's not like i'm not looking for danger threats or some kind of Did I, dramatic thing I just, no i just automatically i'm like what is that you know you know what do we have here that's the best self-defense you know? that's where it all starts you know did I ever yeah. tell you the story about did I tell you this story yet in uh during the blizzard of seventy eight with, with my friend and we were debating whether to walk by a group or not? I think I, you were a kid, right? Yeah. Did I, well, I it's think the blizzard I heard of seventy eight. So Blizzard of seventy eight, um, we're out shoveling snow for money, making some money. It was an amazing time back then because they didn't plow the way they do Literally today. Literally shoveling snow for money. That's not like a metaphor. Literally shoveling no snow for money, big Roslindale. money. Roslindale. Right, we're yeah. In, yeah, we're in Rosie. Let me set the stage. You're right. We're in Rosendale, blue collar neighborhood. It's um, the baby boom generation. So there's kids everywhere. It's so different than it is today. Yeah. It's hard to explain. Like you would go three blocks and you're in enemy territory yeah. with another gang of kids. It was just crazy. I remember. And and, and and we all used to. I shovel snow for money. I rake leaves for money. I mowed lawns for money. I washed cars for money. Yeah. I used to walk around ringing doorbells. How annoying would that be now? Like, you know what? I'd ring doorbells and say, do you want me to wash your car? I tell you, a couple years ago, what was it, like three years ago, we had 100 inches of snow here in yeah. Massachusetts. It was like a record, right? Yeah. I had twice I had kids ring my doorbell. Really? I was so disappointed. I'm like, I had all the snow, and, like, these kids came by, and I paid them good money, and then it snowed again, and they didn't come back. I'm like, <laughs> how good is life around here where these kids don't need this they even good yeah, money? They don't need it. They don't yeah. need it. It was disappointing, yeah. Because when we were kids, it was like, how are we going to get money? It was like how our parents wouldn't money? give it to us. Right. And so it was sort of, how how am I going to even buy candy or baseball cards or how are you going to do it? Or whatever you wanted. How do I get it? Right. So I used to walk around. Didn't you do this? Walk around. Well, I had my paper route, but I also used to walk around ringing doorbells, literally saying, do you want me to to wash your car or, or rake your leaves or, or like yeah. whatever season it was? Definitely. Now, it's so, you know, people would be like, get the hell out of here, kid. You know? Yeah, now you hire professional landscaping. It it just yeah, doesn't yeah. get done by kids. It's it's really strange, right? Yeah. So Blizzard of '78 was like the like the gold rush times for for us as teenagers. We had unlimited supply of snow shoveling jobs, and I would play poker with my buddies. I, Dan, I was so flush with cash. It was awesome, and no school. We had right, about right. a month of no school. The streets weren't plowed. And it really was like being in Alaska during the gold rush or something. It was just weird. But they hadn't planned for the blizzard back hadn't then. Hadn't planned. Right? And I think it was two storms on top of each other. And it was just a great, great time to be a teenager. And I was with my buddy, Tommy McIsaac, whose nickname was Silly, because he would laugh at anything. He would <laughs> say the word shoehorn, and he would just start breaking up laughing. Great guy. Super sweet. Very quiet kind of shy guy but great guy and we had been over sort of across literally across the railroad tracks uh doing some snow shoveling jobs making our money mm -hmm. and we we're coming back to our neighborhood and we had a cross back over the railroad tracks and there was a little bridge as you can imagine with sort of that um uh steel girder kind of little mm -hmm. bridge and there was a little convenience store on the other side of the bridge called bust offs which is so weird. It was like one of those, you know, it's not a chain. It's like some guy started his own little <laughs> convenience store there called Bust Offs, which if you're a Three Stooges fan, he's that was the wrestler in the Three Stooges. So there was a gang of kids, a guy. So mm -hmm. these guys were probably two to four years older than us. And there was a there were some brothers who were just gigantic guys, you know, six three, six five, you know, two two fifty plus. And then some other guys. There was one guy there who was Bobby Burns, who was a regular sized guy. So, really, so you actually knew who they were. Oh, we knew who they yeah. were. But we also knew that something really bad is going to happen to us. I said, if we try to cross this bridge and go by these guys, you know, the very least they're going to shove our heads into the snow and take all our money. Right. The worst that's going to happen, we're going to get pelted with ice balls and then pummeled with fists and. Our faces will be stuck in the snow, and our money will be gone. So well, th there's two two things you bring up that I've said. Like one is, you 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 back in those days, you'd be like, there are other kids there that don't know us. They're older. We can't go past them. You can't go past. We them. can't. Well, no. They're not. And, and I know some of them, yeah, yeah. and they know my brothers, and they've gone to school. 
and they're still going to do it. Yeah. And they don't <laughs> care. And there's, there's going to be no repercussions, really. You know. And yeah. Well, that was. Uh, yeah. Well, that's another thing. It was kids' business, so it right. wasn't like there'd be any repercussions. And then secondly, it would be, you just stare at it and go, I can't picture walking past that that's back to what i was saying some of these situations even as an adult where you just look at it and go i can't picture that going smoothly i can't, can't. picture them just no. letting me go past and, and they were much bigger and stronger than us and there was you know probably six seven of them i don't know how many of there were and here is our debate if we don't cross this bridge we probably add a mile and a half to our journey home we got to go all the way down the road <laughs> to the next bridge and then you start feeling like Hey, what a, am I a man or not? You know, I'm, yeah. I'm probably 120 pounds at yeah. the time, you know, and we're debating about whether or not to cross the bridge. And now where I'm sitting now, I, w I would beseech myself, do not cross that <laughs> bridge. It has nothing to do with your manhood. You're, you're just going to just logic. It's yes. <laughs> a mile and a half is a pleasure to do instead of going by these animals. And as we're sitting there debating it, here comes a snowmobile up the street. So this is how unplowed the streets were. Mm -hmm. These guys were, two guys were on a snowmobile going up the street. One really big, blonde-haired guy. I've never seen either one of these guys before in my life. The only time I saw a snowmobile driving down the middle of the streets of Rosendale anyways. Big guy and a smaller guy in back. And as they approached this group of guys, those guys just blast them with ice balls. Yeah. And the guy stops the snowmobile. They get out. They start having this big argument. And as they're standing there having this argument, one of the group, this guy, Bobby Burns, who was a particularly nasty guy, he's a nice guy, but back in the day, he was just a hellion. He sneaks up behind the smaller guy and bam, he blasts this guy with the hardest punch he can throw. I think he hit the guy like on the nose or something. This poor guy goes down. He's blood is spewing <laughs> everywhere. He is like out of it. He's like knocked him out. So I'm like, holy shit. And now the big guy starts arguing. And the weird thing is, although they attack the smaller guy, they only argue with the bigger guy. <laughs> but there's like three guys there that are just so as big, big as the not, big guy. Big not even well, I guess he couldn't retaliate if they're. He couldn't you know. really retaliate because he was outnumbered about yeah. seven to one. But then he was like, why did you do that? You What the hell? And as all this commotion is going on. Tom, <laughs> Silly and I slink by and we make it through, you know. I felt like we were escaping the Cyclops cave. You know, remember the story from the, the Odyssey? Yeah. They, they hung underneath the, sh the giant sheep and they snuck out when the Cyclops was temporarily blinded. We, we snuck by and, and we made it through safety. And, uh, and then the big guy, like, ends up taking his buddy, his slump body, and putting it on the snowmobile and driving away. And we made it through. <laughs> but that would have been us if if these poor people didn't come along on the snowmobile. I do think it's hard. For, I, I don't know. Maybe it differs by neighborhood, but for people to remember how it was like the Wild West when you were a kid, like, yes. not like to be a kid back then meant you were in the Wild West, right? It meant like people could just attack you, beat you up, and it would just not be. Dan, it was mayhem, and there was no leash laws in my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. And people didn't spay their animals. So, yeah. like, every block you walked down, you had the risk of either getting beat up or humped by some crazy or bit, dog. Bit by a dog. Yeah, you get bit and humped by it. It <laughs> would be in heat, and it would be <laughs> jumping on your leg and biting you. It, it was madness. Yeah. But that's what I was saying. Like, it used to be part of, like, a childhood. It was, like, skin knee, falling off a bike, and, like, dog bite. Dog bite. Like, you could just oh be, yeah. like, that's something that could happen. You could be, like, I got bit by a dog. Did you get bit by a dog as a kid? Yeah. Yeah. And it would just be, I did. I German got bit several German times. Shepherd. Yeah. And it would just be sort of, like... It wasn't like you'd go home and it wasn't like, well, let's go find the owner. And it was just like, we yeah, did nothing. Bit by, bit by did nothing. Dog. Yep. If didn't anything, go to the maybe, your, maybe your parent would be like, I told you stay away from that dog. Are you talking? Are you, t you know, if they knew which dog it was, <laughs> that's like, exactly that what it was. Yep. So, yeah, now there'd be a SWAT team take uh, employed to take out the dog. Right. And, you know, and, right. And th that'd be the end of the dog for sure. I think we all got bit by dogs several times. But do you remember Halloween? What that used to be like? I'm, again, I'm sure there's some mayhem on Halloween, but for me, I, I, you just remind me of like running into. I, I was at the very end of the night, which was the worst when I had my whole haul of candy. You rounded a corner, it was like older kids, and that's mm. what I was thinking when you said that. It was like older kids, crap. Right. You know, like older kids just meant you were screwed. You were screwed. They're gonna take your candy. Yeah, and so they. I yeah. tried to hold on, and they like just knocked me down and i was trying i was on the i remember being on the ground <laughs> trying to hold on he was swinging me around then he just started kicking at me like 
kicking at me and took the candy and just ran off. And I was well, like, you know what, Dan? You know what I think we can learn from this? That's where you got your situational awareness from. <laughs> it's just traumatic you needed, childhood. You needed it. Maybe that's why I trained too. It's like yeah. anger that you couldn't do anything. <laughs> I, I still think. I think if I ran into that guy today, I'd be like, still angry. <laughs> you know, if he was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm the one who took your candy," I'd be like, "I think you're still rotten, like inside." <laughs> Like I, I never, when I was a kid, I never would have done that to him. What was kid, the age you know? discrepancy between you it's and like the about kid? About four years. Yeah, that's like pretty he, he shitty. Had, he had a lot, yeah. a lot. Not one he was two. way bigger. I was like yeah. up to his chest. Yeah. You know, so it was like, I think you have to be a little bit rotten. You know, I think some of those guys are like they grow yeah. up and they're like, they get better and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, but it's like, y- you have it in you. I don't think right. I ever. I didn't ever had that in me. I never would have. No, I don't think you would ever do that. Knocked down and kicked a little kid no, for his no. candy. I think you're right. Some people have it and some don't. Yeah. yeah. My neighborhood, w- it was so densely packed that we didn't have to go far, and we had loads of Halloween candy. So I never got that experience. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't have to go far. I just did. But we had all these big families. So, so everybody, and I was sort of the young end of the baby boom generation, so everybody had older brothers. So sometimes there would be that um, – Re- repercussions for <laughs> something, you know. A couple of my friends uh, uh, beat up these two kids, I remember, these two brothers. And, uh, well, yeah, and w- we were standing around one day, and I wasn't there. I had nothing to do with it because I would, I would never be the type of person who just beat somebody up. Mm-hmm. And they had two big, burly brothers. And I think I was at Rosendale Pizza, I think it was, and I was having a slice of pizza, and these two knuckleheads were standing out front, and I come walking out with the pizza, and their eyes opened like as wide as human eyeballs can open, and then they just ran as fast as they could. I was like, what the hell's going on? Then I saw these two burly gorillas like running them down, and they caught them in the street and on the sidewalk and just hammered them, just pounded them, and it was revenge (laughs) because these guys beat up their brother, and I was like, huh. And, uh, yeah. Sounds like they deserved it, though. They definitely deserved it, yeah. They and they did. didn't get, you know, they weren't put in the hospital. They would just got a good pounding, yeah. you but know. I think of the st- like I remember one time, and I, I don't know why, we're, but they, but I was walking with my younger brother and his friend, and we just ran into a maniac. The same thing, that bad, like four or five years older range. Like yeah. we ran into some teenager that was just out of his mind, and he was just started yelling at us and threatening, and we were like, uh, you know, you're a little kid, you mm. can't do anything, if right? You're a teenager. And he, so th- there was a bridge. And it that, was I- like that is a very helpless feeling. Like yeah. when you're about 12 or 13 years old. I, I remember, Dan, when I was 13, for some reason in my mind, I thought I was an adult male, but I was probably 100 pounds. Yeah, you, you can't know? do anything. Yeah. So this kid, he at one point, he grabbed, there was like a bridge, like 30 feet down to over the Bronx River. Holy shit. And he started dangling me over it and saying, I'm going to drop you. That's <laughs> terrorizing. <laughs> yeah, it was like real terror this time. Dan, like, I think we've got to the root of your situational that, awareness. Uh, <laughs> Holy <laughs> cow. And that was, and the Bronx River, by the way, at that point, at that place, it was like two feet deep. Like, I'm dead if he drops me down. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? You're going to break your neck and Yeah, die. he was just yeah. dr- dangling me over, going, Should I drop you? Should I drop <laughs> you? Like, I, and my two, my poor brother and his friend are like, oh. Like just sitting there in silence, and I'm I'm just dangling there, like uh, like I wasn't like I wasn't I was like not a huge, like emotional kid, so I wasn't like screaming. I was just sort of like man, you're yeah. I just remember sort of dangling there, like well, you are, dude, you are psychologically, emotionally so sound that you're not completely traumatized by that. That's awful. I remember it. Yeah. The other thing is he pulled like, the way I remember that ending is, and and the strange thing is that made an impression. But then the biggest impression was like we were near the train station and we were stuck with the guy. Then he started like talking to us. I think he was out of his mind. I think honestly there was something really wrong with him. Yeah. He was like, so you guys blah, 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 talking. And we were like, how do we get away? You know, how do we? And then we were at the and the train pulled up and we were like, can we just hook on to some adult here? Or how right. do we like? But then I remember like the train door closed and he started pounding the window of the train, screaming at the adults. And that's what stood out to me. I was like. This kid's not even, he's bothering the adults. Mm. Like when you were a kid, it was completely unhinged. I thought we were in kid world. Like I thought we were in kid world where they're bothering You can be sadistic to other children, but you can't do it to adults. Yeah, he's bothering adults. And the way I got it, he said, did you know you could uh, 
you can climb on top. There's like that overpass that goes over the track. And mm-hmm. it like and uh, like a bridge over the track, and it had a roof on it. And he goes, "You can get up onto the roof of getting over the track." And I remember saying, "Yeah, how do you do it?" And he goes, "Watch." And he jumps up on the roof, and the second he started on the roof, I was like, "Run!" And we just, <laughs> we just like ran, you know, we just ran as fast as we could into some store or something like that. And oh, you ran back to your neighborhood or whatever. yeah, yeah, or into yeah. S- into a store, and it was like that's how we got away. But the funny thing is, the reason I'm thinking of it is this theme of it was kids world yeah like i didn't even tell my parents right like i remember walking home like lord of the flies yeah and walking home it was like let's take a different bridge but like we basically walked home ourselves like alone Mm. like Mm. we're now you you would say hey mom now you'd be on the cell phone and be like someone pick me up there's a maniac (laughs) dan how was your day yeah oh yeah some maniac hung me upside down over a bridge and almost killed me (laughs) that's nice at the time you're like well then she (laughs) won't let me walk back in right there no but I remember doing my paper route and there was like I I one time got followed by like adults, like scummy looking guys in a windowless van, which is like the Jeez. stereotype. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're on to something you're like they were following me like and I spotted them again. And I was like, that's really weird. You know, and so yeah. I like ran through some yards. And remember back then you knew all the yards and knew oh, how to. Oh, that's right. So you didn't yeah, even you use ba- the sidewalks. You knew then. backyards yeah. and you knew. So I ran through some yards and ran home, and I was like, there's some guys following me in a van. But I, what I remember is my parents, my dad stayed with me the next day I did the paper route. And, like, they didn't, you know, no, there was no danger. Nothing happened. So then the next day, I'm just out there again. You Your know dad I mean? like did the like, one-day check. Yeah, one day all check. All clear. And then it was like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine now? You'd be like, it's going to be a year. You're not even doing it. You're never delivering papers again if yeah. it was your kid. Oh, yeah. It would be like a all it, alert or some kind it, of alert would go out right for the van and so forth yeah so yeah, the, uh, kids don't deliver newspapers anymore do no, they? no it's all that because one guy in a car probably does 50 of these routes that right that kids used to also i used to get less than minimum wage i don't know if you have a paper route but oh they, yeah i had paper out they, yeah they never for us it was it was at the end of the week come pay me 62 dollars or whatever it was and it was like i don't care how much you get oh, or how much right. you it's like it just come scam. pay me there were weeks where I didn't have the money. <laughs> you are at a loss. Like it's like you have, yeah, it was a, a real entrepreneurial yeah. venture. I'd it was run, not a job. I would run a loss right. and be like, Mom and Dad, and I, need like, have I need $8 <laughs> to pay the paper route guy, which I delivered seven days a week. I need $8 to pay this um, national corporation yeah, exactly. <laughs> for allowing me to deliver their product. Um, did you have... I remember this going to collect and you'd always have some house that was cheap or they never paid. They yeah. were just like uh, near do wells. And you go, yeah. yeah, you owe me for three weeks now or whatever. And they'd be like, no, we don't. Yeah. yeah. Awful. Right? And, and the amount it was back then, it would be like. It's like a dollar a yeah, week. Or yeah. Something, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a dollar a week. I remember once I might have told you this. Someone ran up eight weeks. Yeah. And I was like terrorized. And I would remember you were you were afraid to to tell them it was eight weeks. But I was like, I had like a little thing that showed like this kind of proof. It's like they were like, what is it now? It's been like three weeks. And I was I said, "Uh, it's actually been eight weeks. And she was like, eight weeks. And this was a town like people were pretty well to do. And did she do the the old blame you? The eight weeks came to whatever's eight times a dollar sixty. So it was like eleven something or twelve twenty or, you know, something like this. Twelve eighty. Yeah. No, that's quick. Thank you. Twelve eighty, and um, so, but not a lot of money, right? And she sent her son out, who was a grown man. He was a mall cop, and uh, <laughs> like he was a literal mall cop, but like six four, mustache. I was a little boy, yeah. You know, delivering newspapers, eleven or twelve or yeah. something, yeah. And uh, this guy started shoving me, like shoving me around the. You know, he was like he, he shoved. He you. was poking me and she was going, Oh, you think you can just? Uh, you think you can make some money off us? You think we're stupid? We're I was like, I got, I got eight. That's weeks amazing got for oh, for the, for what for twelve dollars? You know what I mean? Did you get your money? Yeah, they paid me. But they sho- but they shoved you around first. But again, literally shoved yeah. you around. It's been like thirty something years. I f- really feel like coming back. Damn, and I just think we've totally narrowed down. We figured out why figured you have this amazing situational awareness. <laughs> You've been just terrorized by jackasses I, I your feel, whole yeah, childhood. Well, this is over the course of a lifetime, but yeah. I feel like I don't actually forgive them. Like, I think if I saw them now, I'd just be like... That mall cop guy, I would yeah. not forgive that. Yeah. 
I'm I'm mad for you. Yeah. If I saw yeah. him, I think I would punch him in the stomach. Yeah. <laughs> just just be like, yeah, I don't forgive you. Yeah. That's yeah, that's yeah. rotten. What, what that's doing? rotten. Yeah. You know. It's rotten, but yeah. I yeah. I'm not, you know, I hadn't really thought I had these stories, but I got a bunch more. I don't want to keep <laughs> doing them, but like I think just people being total horrible. I remember being a little boy, like 10, and my brother was 8. We were walking alone okay. in the, the Galleria. It was a, this White Plains, New York mall. Okay. And um, I think it's really out of fashion right now. But at the time, everyone went to the Galleria. Yep. Again, two teenagers, you're up to their stomach. Right. One of them stops and goes, what did you say to me? <laughs> like one of those out of the he, blue. He, he pulled the taxi like, drive on yeah, you. You're, you're just, talking to me? Yeah, but he just did I'm it. I'm the only one standing here. You're talking to me? I and I'm like, I didn't, what, do you, what do you mean? I was like <laughs> a little go, boy. Je ne sais pas. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I couldn't even pull out the French. <laughs> you didn't know French yet. I just like, but I probably said the same thing in English. I'm like, uh, I didn't say, uh, I didn't say anything. He's like, your friend says you called him a homo or something. <laughs> where I'm like, no, I didn't call anyone homo. I just walk uh, in. Past I'm not sure what homo yeah, is. Just like, I just walk in past and go to the candy. Like I was like a little kid. Like we're just going to get licorice. Candy, going yeah. to get candy, and they're like, oh, yeah, you think you're funny? You think you can just call us homos? And I was like, no. You think I'm a clown I here to entertain you? Just like looking around, just sort of like, is there, could I, where's the mall cop? <laughs> where's the mall where's cop the now? Mall cop? <laughs> where is he now? Oh, man. But He's I, off p- pushing around some 11 year old newspaper. I don't know, boy. Is it still like that? Probably is. I don't know. I feel like the times have changed, but maybe I'm just an adult now, so I don't see it. But I feel like, I mean, this is just a hamp. There's more, you know what I mean? Like, I just felt like that was part of growing up, just like rotten people being rotten to you. I think you so. Know? Yeah. You you definitely were attuned to the shadow side, the dark side of humanity. I don't think anything like that's happened to my kids. And I've, not, I've, right? I've got 10, 20 more stories like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's just like, just rotten people. Like, right. if you run in, but that's why my impression was always you run into older kids, you're in trouble. And that, uh, to your point, I guess it was like, it's sort of been a joke, but I think it's true that, like, you grew up and you're like, I better I gotta look see out who's for around. Myself. Yeah, who's around? Yeah. Who's around if I take the wrong turn or I. If I'm not watching. Absolutely. You know, of all the training I've done over the years, I think I've boiled down my self-defense philosophy. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Here it is. I think once you determine somebody is interested in doing violence to you, then they no longer, they're violating the social contract, the social covenant. So I don't have to treat them as a human being anymore. So once they decide they're going to be violent to me, then I view them as an animal, like I'm just a rabid raccoon. So if a, if a rabid raccoon comes walking down the street, it can't help itself. It's just probably going to attack you, right? But if a rabid raccoon walks down the street, I don't go, hey, mister, back off and square up and put my fists up and faint and then yeah. like shoot in for a takedown and take his back and choke him out or anything. I'm just going to avoid the animal. So whatever that is, if, it, if it's running around a car, jumping on top of a car, running away if I'm faster than it, if I can get into my car and lock the door, if I can go someplace and shut the door, I'm going to avoid the animal at all costs, right? That's what you would do if it was a rabid raccoon, right? Right. So I would treat a, a human being yeah, in the like same if, yeah, fashion. Yeah, just an animal snarling at you, you'll jump up on the – yeah, like you said, you'll grab a garbage can and throw it at it. Right. You'll grab a rock or bre- – you know, like you'll yes, just get exactly. it away from you. you know? Right, and you're not going to have any personal – animosity toward the animal you're not going to say how dare that rabid raccoon come at me offended yeah i'm offended Uh, he he insulted my manhood exactly and that's the trap you can get into when it's another human being when it's another man now it's all of a sudden becomes a question of your manhood which it isn't at all that's absurd and why allow him that privilege of putting that on the table and it has nothing to do with that so i think that's the best approach to self-defense it's you can't always do it that way but if you can uh, that's the way to do it. Yeah. I think the one thing that about that that people get confused, and you must hear this all the time, which is even though I totally agree with that, people confuse that with they'll say, oh, but so, yeah, the self-defense on the street is totally different than training in the gym. And, and, right. And, but they make it sound like so training in the gym doesn't do anything. Well, that's and the that's thing that totally either people who yeah. don't want to train because they're too lazy they don't want to put the effort in or these people who do these cockamamie martial arts where they're not really training live 
and they think, well, what we're doing is so deadly, it's effective on right, the street. Right, right. And those guys who are training a sport, some combat sport, that's useless on the street. I mean, that's just right. dopey and makes no sense whatsoever. But you bring up a good point. There's no MM, professional MMA fighter or like Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt that says like, I don't think any of this would work on the street. You know, they, they, right. like once you're trained, you no You can get in trouble though. I saw a video, sure. Dan, a uh, YouTube video. This is horrible. So uh, down in Brazil, uh, they purport that this guy was a black belt. He got in some kind of road rage argument with the guy and the other guy pulled out a handgun <laughs> and he tried to tackle the guy and he got shot. I mean, that's just super bad judgment, right? But, um, yeah, well, yeah, it's madness. Uh, well, actually, no. wasn't there was what's his name? The, uh, that really good, um, really high level Muay Thai guy who got shot in uh, Alex uh, Gong, Gong. I think yeah, his yeah, name yeah. was. Yeah, he, he got, got stabbed by some truck driver, right? It Did was he like get stabbed or shot? I thought he got stabbed. I thought he got shot, but, but you might be right. But yeah, that same principle. Like you just don't mess. Like I, you can't because no. you see that and you go, well, I can't fight as well as him. You know, like I'm not. You know, right. I'm not a world class Muay Thai guy. And right. He got stabbed or shot. Like the lessons learned. But if the sport combat doesn't work then the non-sport combat no way in hell that's going to work you know what i mean yeah 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 sure your tai chi or whatever not to denigrate those that's not going to help you as much as uh, a combat sport would help you right i've heard that too or, where people say well you know like even however trained you are you still can't be you know rob gronkowski in a fight or something now my point is always like well how do you think i do untrained against Rob Gronkowski <laughs> like <laughs> like <laughs> probably <laughs> worse it's like yeah. or like a little guy that's a good fighter U Uriah Faber he still can't he would still have a lot of trouble with you know this NFL lineman and it's like how would an untrained Uriah yeah. Faber do against the NFL lineman well I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast one of my students Abraham uh who yeah. weighs 120 pounds as heavy as I, I've seen him on the scale he's that big 5'5 120 he was working in a gas station here, and a guy came in, tried to rob the till, and started punching him in the head. And and this guy was much bigger than one twenty. The guy was—I don't know how big the guy was, but he was probably you could tell on the you video, know five eight one eighty or something. Who the heck knows? Uh, so he's at least fifty percent bigger than Abraham. And Abraham jumped up on the counter, and like a keto robber, jumped down on top of the guy and just pummeled the guy, and then he choked him unconscious. So he used his combat yeah. sport his mma training to just completely dominate this guy choked the guy unconscious the police came arrested the guy um good end to the story nobody was really hurt seriously hurt he had a little mouse under his eye and the and the, i think the guy had a bit of a black eye so uh, first of all i like how you compared him to the guy jumping out of the tree <laughs> <laughs> if you see the video it's really he uh, does how do if anyone's listening and haven't seen the video which i don't but you gotta, gotta see gotta, it it was covered I by know. boston 25 news and channel 5 news here in boston i'm sure if you go to their website you can look I don't can even look know it what up the, the keywords would be but it was uh it's a great video you know yeah. it's a great thing to see and i remember how you described it it was like the robber thought i'm here to rob a gas station and Abraham was like, you're actually going to be in an MMA fight. <laughs> like, that's not, you're not here for robbery. You're here for an MMA fight. And the robber was like, I, I didn't think I would know I was going to be in an MMA fight. You can catch a glimpse of his expression, the robber's expression, when Abraham jumps off of the counter on top of him. He's like, oh, oh God. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, oh, this is not. Yeah. <laughs> and then I can imagine about 30 seconds in, the guy is just exhausted oh going, God, what yeah. the hell? He saw this 120-pound little guy, and he thought, I'm just going to smack this guy around. It was yeah. like somebody from your neighborhood. Okay, yeah. you know, I'm going to walk yeah. down, smack this guy, and take his Halloween candy. And he had another, st well, again, another he thing had, coming. I'm sure he had an image in his head of how it was going to go. And it just yeah. went. When, like when he jumped up on the counter, and ju he, you know, he all of a sudden was like, this is not what I was picturing at all. <laughs> this is not what I had And then I think Abraham like, choked him unconscious. Yeah. And then I think whenever he started waking up, he just choked him back he did conscious and abraham is the sweetest nicest guy yeah a very he's, gentle he's person a really nice guy yeah and i i believe the only reason why abraham reacted the way he did is the guy hit him like three or four times and i think that just triggered him and he just reacted yeah know? i think abraham said several times in one of the news stories i saw where he said if he just a demanded the money i would have just given it to him right but yeah. he started off with like hitting him yes Exactly. And grabbing, snatching at it and hitting him. Right. So he was like, I'm in a fight, I guess, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. So cool. I'm just gl- I'm glad he's safe and the other guy's safe too. Yeah, it all turned out. Turned out for you know, it was a perfect story, right? Like That's it. Guy didn't get badly hurt. Abraham didn't, you know, didn't get hurt and the station didn't get robbed. Everything turned out perfect. Everything turned out great. Awesome. So Dan, I think let's recap. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> I just think it's funny because we didn't talk about anything that we planned on talking about. I thought we covered some great stuff. We talked about self-defense, situational awareness. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not what we planned on talking about. Not at all. <laughs> but I'm perfectly happy with that. You know me. Uh, I'm not a big planner anyways. Yeah, no, but I agree that it was a, you know, a good real-life example after example of situations you find yourself in. And right. And, and, and the, the best thing you can do is to not go down the dark alley. Yeah. And to s- notice that somebody is following you, notice that somebody just flipped their hood up and they're about to intersect you and turn around and go the other direction. Um, notice that that gang on the other side of the railroad bridge is probably going to take your money and pummel you. Um, all those things are very important. Yeah, and I think you have to acknowledge that if there's not a big reward. There's not a huge reward to staring down a block and saying, <coughs> I might... I'm just going to avoid that. You don't know that you might have just avoided getting right. stabbed or robbed yeah. or beaten up. Like yeah. you just don't know. You know, so there's no reward. You've no. I'm sure we both have many stories where you just sort of made some little choice for safety and you didn't realize right. that you, you you don't know that you saved yourself at all. Dan, I wanted to add this one other point yeah. about training. One of the benefits of training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Muay Thai kickboxer or mixed martial arts, one of these live sort of martial arts where you get to spar live is you get some feedback so you get some self-knowledge about how good of a fighter you really are and i think that benefits you because it it helps you turn away from the dark alley because you're like no i'm not really a big pussy i know that i'm relatively rugged person because i do my training so i don't have to prove anything to myself by going down this dark alley it actually i think it makes it easier to make the right decision uh, you could make a case that's the number one or close to the main benefit of training. I think so. You're not, you don't have that insecurity where you have to have to prove yeah, something prove anything to yourself to or somebody. Yeah. yeah. Because more directly, you can also walk away from a fight if someone pushed you. Picture for you, like if some especially non-threatening skinny guy pushed you because he was drunk, you wouldn't feel like you had to beat him up. Or, no. You know, you just feel like... If uh, you go on YouTube, if you watch some of the road rage fights out there these guys are barking at each other and they start fighting they can't fight at all yeah. N- like the majority Usually, of them yeah. are terrible so they obviously haven't done any training so they f- they must feel some need to ex- to express that out on the streets which is a huge mistake but um that's a huge benefit i think of training you're right okay dan let's wrap it up oh the other thing is you are an amazing dad for taking your son to tokyo an amazing right. husband for taking your wife on that trip. <laughs> the the only thing I'm worried about is I think you've just peaked. I think your your ratings are going to spike and start a slow decline. Well, I'll now. Ri- try to ride the spike for a while. <laughs> try to say you know, like, remember when I took you to Tokyo? <laughs> what about the time I took you to Paris? <laughs> <laughs> you are awesome, man. Okay, so this has been Power of the Tribe. So please. Go to iTunes or your podcast app and YouTube. Please subscribe to all of those things because this is going to be up on YouTube. Please rate and give us a positive review. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not, Uh, especially if you are one of my friends or or a family member or a student. So uh, I would say this, that I'm not sure people realize that. Like if someone just dropped like a positive comment in, We'd read it and appreciate it. Like it's really not like, you know, we'd just it. be like, hey, we, you know, right I now feel we have really good. We have you two know? reviews. Yeah. One is by, I believe, John Burke and the other by Annie. And I really appreciate that. So if anyone else could give us a positive review, I would really appreciate it. And when I post it on Facebook, if you could share it on Facebook, I would really, really appreciate it. And I know there are people out there listening to it um, and giving us great feedback. So if you could take that one extra step of sharing it perhaps with something, I know it takes a little time, we would really appreciate it. It would be awesome. And if you want to learn about martial arts, come down to Connors Martial Arts here in Norwood, Mass. Um, ConnorsMA.com. And you can find us on Facebook and Instagram and so forth. Anything to add, Dan? No, good. Awesome. Another great episode. Thank you very much, bud.